There they both are, two identical shoes, both copiously green and indiscriminately snakeskin, reunited on your feet. Good, they're balanced, comfy. Feels like the only good thing about you right now, truth be told. Officer. The young woman raises a cigarette to her lips. Her eyes are brown and her face is speckled with birthmarks. She can't be more than 28. Uh, no. Because you're a police officer, sir. Okay, cool. I won't. Okay? Sir, you've been here for three days. On official police business, as you put it. I couldn't say. In truth, so far, mostly drinking. Could it be because of the drinking? Don't be so harsh on yourself. They let almost anyone be a police officer. The words have already left your mouth. <laughs> what was that? That's not even how words are used. What did you say? Come on, say it again. Come on, man. Pretty, please. One more time. <laughs> Goddamn right you did. You crazy asshole, you. What kind of cop are you? Okay, sir. I have to ask, do you really not remember? Just like that? You drank so much you lost your memory? I'm sorry. It's gonna suck for you later when you have to interrogate me. And for the record, no, I didn't do it. You should totally sing karaoke here, the first chance you get. Your emotions need to be expressed. People need to know your vast oceanic soul. Of course, at this point, precise measurements of your soul can only be performed from the outside. It needs to be heard. Through a PA system. By other people. You should sing the sad small church song from that tape you found thought it was obvious. No, no, don't sing the happy song. It's stupid. 
Seeing the sad song, it's profound. You would need another copy of the tape first, though. The one upstairs is destroyed. You should sing the sad small church song from that tape you found. Serves them right. Wipe that smirk off their face with your sad, tragic song. Who's laughing now? No one. You would need another copy of the tape first, though. The one. A man in his late twenties stands behind the counter, inspecting a stuffed seabird. As you approach, he gives you a sideways glance, then looks down again. That was disdain in his eyes. Even now he's purposely ignoring you. No, I'm not the bartender. I'm the cafeteria manager. I have three cafeterias to manage. Three. Sylvie tends the bar here, not me. I'm only standing in. She just, you know. A competent work of taxidermy. The white and brown seabird lies among piles of coasters and drying mugs. One of its wings broken. The man is trying to mend it. Looks like the bird was ripped off the shield that was used to mount it, most likely on a wall. Something about it makes you feel bitter. Look, your buddy is over there. Why don't you go and talk to him, okay? He pretends not to hear you, concentrating on the bird instead. Oh no, you're a hero. A real hero cop. Could the massive property damage upstairs have anything to do with this? Yes, you are. A real decorated hero. What did you not do? First you took the body down, then you solved the murder, then you didn't trash my hostel room. Maybe you even negotiated the strike. Oh, it's not? You're right. It's not. Hello, sweetie. You shouldn't keep your colleague waiting. A bespectacled man in an orange bomber jacket is tapping his foot on the floor. Looks like he's waiting for someone. You. As you approach, he narrows his eyes and extends his hand in greeting. If an assault were launched on this building right now, if the windows came crashing down and the whole world descended upon you, this man would hurl himself in death's way to save you. You are sure of this, but why? He is your half-brother. Hello, I'm Kim Kitsuragi, Lieutenant, Precinct 57. You must be from the 41st. You realize he is waiting for your name. This is your chance to come up with a really good name for yourself. Get creative. Conceptualize. Concentration makes you squint your eyes. Your name should be deep gold and orange, like a forest fire looming on the horizon, but mixed with the stench of liquor rising from your breath. You're two steps closer to it, but there are still many to go. Okay, then. It looks like we had a little scheduling error on Sunday. Saturday too, actually. Have you had time to talk to the manager here? 
If you don't mind, we should talk to him again. Ask him for a rundown of the area. Now that I'm here as well. I understand the scene is out back, right? It also wouldn't hurt to assure him the police are finally here. In full force, I mean. Have you mapped out the initial interviews? Right. And the interviews? At the 57th, we like to prepare an initial list of persons of interest and then just skim the surface. Prepare the field, get to know the players. You don't do that? Maybe it's not an inter-district practice. Good. But even if you haven't, we'll have time for that after we take a look at the coroner's case. Have you removed the dead body from the tree? Mm-hmm. Sure. But did you take it down from the tree? So, the body is still in the tree. This is the first time you detect a weariness in the lieutenant's voice. It is obvious he would have preferred for the body to no longer be in the tree. Where it has been hanging for seven days straight. We should go there as soon as we are done talking to the owner. We all feel that way sometimes. There is no such thing as a police officer, I'm afraid. What remains is that there is a dead body in the tree. Someone has to figure out who put it there. If we don't, no one else will. But first, we have to take it down. I was sent here to meet a detective from Precinct 41. You have the insignia of the citizen's militia on your sleeve and on your back. I suppose you could be impersonating him. You could have gotten the insignia from the black market or forged it. But for now, I'm going to set those possibilities aside. I'm not from the Inspectorate General. Internal affairs. And I'm not them. I'm from criminal investigation. Yes. They are not just white rectangles. They bear a halogen watermark with the letters RCM and a pattern resembling the street grid of Revachol West. I would ask you to step into the headlights of my motor carriage, but again, it's none of my concern. I just need you to do your job. You mean you don't have a badge? Losing your identification card is a serious matter. My vehicle has a shortwave. You can use it to report your badge missing. I would advise you to locate it as quickly as possible. But getting the body down should still take precedence. All right, come on now. If he hasn't said anything about your lack of pants, no one will. You're only hurting yourself by not wearing them. I can see you drank last night and the night before, and that you are still drunk now. But I have seen officers go through worse, much worse. If you need something for your headache, there is a general store nearby. But as I said, the dead body should be our number one concern. Talk to the manager, then we go out back and take the body down. After you, officer. Lieutenant Kitsuragi is now in your party. You can talk to him whenever by interacting with him. like he works for Wild Pines, a logistics company who owns and operates the harbor. Possibly because there's a strike going on in the harbor, there's not much to do aside from drinking and sleeping. The man does not mind. You probably need them more than he does. You've just picked up some magnesium. 
This item is stored in the bottom left corner of the screen above your character portrait. Use magnesium to heal your morale if you have morale damage. You gently shake his shoulder, but nothing happens. This man could probably sleep soundly in a ship's engine room. 